The capital of Sweden is filled with amazing things to see and do, but it's also filled with attractions that you're better off avoiding. Today I'm gonna talk about tourist traps in Stockholm. This video is gonna be all about tourist traps in Stockholm, overpriced places that you wanna avoid, and miserable attractions in general. There's just one problem. Stockholm is so expensive that it's really hard to tell what's a tourist trap and what isn't. All of the things I'm gonna mention will give you some value for your money. None of these things are scams. They're just places that you might wanna think twice about before you go, unless you feel like wasting money. If you're not stinking rich, then this video just might be useful for you. So without further ado, let's get started on some more or less common tourist traps in Stockholm. Most people who come to Stockholm arrive at Arlanda Airport, and the first thing they want to do is get to Stockholm City. The most expensive option is to take a taxi, but the next most expensive option is to take an express train called Arlanda Express. Arlanda Express costs 320 Swedish crowns for a one-way trip, which is bloody expensive, even if it is very quick and convenient. There are airport buses with Flygbussarna that are much cheaper instead. These will cost you 129 Swedish crowns if you buy online. Don't use the fiscal ticket machines though, these will cost you 20 Swedish crowns extra compared to buying online. You can also go by Flixbus or Netbus for a little bit over 100 Swedish crowns, but they don't depart very often. There is also a public transport option with a commuter train, but that costs 169 Swedish crowns, and it has a bit of a complicated ticketing system. My recommendation is to take an airplane coach. Orlando Express is more than three times as expensive, so it's not really worth the cost. It's not a scam because it's actually a really good service, but it also is a bit of an expensive tourist trap. Stockholm is full of water, and it's absolutely lovely to experience it from the canals running through the city. There are many companies offering boat tours with gorgeous sights and lots of interesting information. But those boat tours cost a lot, several hundreds of Swedish crowns. I've gone on these tours a couple of times, and it's definitely a nice experience. But is it worth the cost? Well. No, not really. You can still experience Stockholm from the water in other ways. You can rent a kayak, for example. That's a lot more fun, and it's cheaper as well. Or you can take a boat to the archipelago. You get a marvelous view of the city either way, and it's still cheaper than one of the touristy boat tours of the Stockholm canals. So while these guided boat tours are quite nice, they're also a bit of a tourist trap. The Globe Arena is called Avicii Arena these days, and it's an infamous landmark of Stockholm. It sticks out like a giant pimple in the southern part of town, and it's not exactly a beautiful sight. It is noticeable though, I'll give it that. Sky View is an attraction that promises gorgeous views of the city, high up on top of the Globe Arena. For 170 Swedish crowns, you can travel 85 meters up in the air to get a view of Stockholm. It is a nice view from up there, but it's a bit of a hassle to get to the Globe Arena, and you have to book a time slot in advance, and it's not exactly cheap either. Instead, you can walk to Montelius-Vägen or Skinnarviksberget and get lovely views of the city for free. Skyview isn't really all that much more impressive than either of those two options, so I'd say that it's a bit of a tourist trap. Let's talk about the Swedish tipping culture, or the lack thereof, cause in Sweden you don't really tip at restaurants or bars. If you buy a beer, you might round up a couple of crowns. 
If you get good service at a restaurant, you might round up a couple of tens of crowns. But no one expects it, and no one depends on it. The only time that Swedes actually tip is if it's a bunch of drunk happy guys at a restaurant. Then they're all like, yeah, have a couple of hundreds extra. However, many card payment terminals have buttons for easy tipping amounts these days. You know, 10%, 15% or 20% presented in big shiny tempting buttons. My guess is that those are built by American companies because those values make no sense at all in Sweden. In most situations, Swedes give 0% tip, nothing at all. So keep that in mind, especially if you come from a country with a tipping culture, that tipping in Sweden is a tourist trap. Gamla stan, Stockholm Old Town is a lovely place. It's filled with narrow alleys and historical buildings. Stockholm was founded in the 1200s, and this was the actual city back then. Up until 1980, the official name of Stockholm Old Town was the city between the bridges, and it's definitely one of the most memorable areas of Stockholm. It's also one of the most touristy places in the entire city. Is Stockholm Old Town a tourist trap? Yes and no. It's not a tourist trap in the normal sense. Local people hang out here, and there are lots of awesome quirky little stores. But there are also many places to avoid. Restaurants in Gamla Stan are a bit of hit or miss. Some are great, and some are not as great. If you see restaurants with primarily English menus and no prices on display, you might want to be a bit careful. And even the non-tourist in restaurants can be quite expensive. Restaurants in Old Town can cost almost twice as much as restaurants in other places, but the quality isn't twice as good. Hare Krishnas are pretty common in Old Town as well, but it's all a bit of good fun. They don't harm anyone, except that they do make a lot of noise. There are tons of tacky gift shops lining the street all the way from Drottninggatan to Old Town. I understand if you want to get some Swedish souvenirs, and sometimes the easiest way to get a Dalekalian horse or some handicraft is at one of these places. But you have alternatives. In between all the kitschy and touristy shops, you can find stores selling authentic handicraft. Here are some quick pointers for how to tell if what you see is a touristy gift shop or not. Do you see any Viking hats, Sweden t-shirts or trolls in the window? Then it's a tourist gift shop. Do you see the word authentic anywhere? Then it's not authentic. Also, do you see any moose? Then it's a gift shop aimed at German tourists. If you avoid stores with all of those signs, then you might have found something actually authentic. If you have fika or a beer in Gamla Stan, you're gonna believe that you've run into a tourist trap, but you actually haven't. It's just insanely expensive everywhere in Stockholm. And if you see signs about medieval vaults or Viking-themed restaurants and stuff like that, then it's actually not a tourist trap either. Again, it will be expensive, but you'll also get a really cool experience. Oh, and speaking of things that aren't tourist traps, I have to give a shout out to Morten Trotsig's Grend. It's the narrowest alley in Old Town, and when it's not cluttered with tourists, it makes for a gorgeous sight. If you can see the alley for all the graffiti, that is. Also, don't forget to check out the smallest public monument in Sweden, Jan Poike, the Iron Boy, also known as Boy Looking at the Moon. I'm not exactly sure why people are offering things to Jan Poike, but uh, oh well, it's a nice gesture, I guess. Vi kanske inte har så länge kvar på den här jorden, så vi tackar för det vi har. Sprid glädje som en polare sa. Drick lite bärs. Och var jävligt glad för det man har. Alkohol is expensive in Sweden. Very expensive. As in, you might have to sell a kidney to afford a night out. Despite that, Swedes have a tendency to drink a lot. You might think that all the exorbitant prices at pubs make them tourist traps, but they're actually not. You often have to pay more than 100 Swedish crowns for a beer everywhere. The most expensive places are around the central station or in Old Town though, so you may want to avoid them. 
but if you go to Sveavägen or Södermalm, then you can often find more dodgy looking bars where you can find beer as cheap as 40 Swedish crowns. That's a bit more affordable. Cheers! Something that many people want to do when they visit Stockholm is to go to a nightclub. I guess they're envisioning a night of drunken fun among beautiful Swedish lads and lasses, dancing the night away until the morning. In reality, what they'll get is a night of expensive drinks and expensive cover charges among wannabe rappers and snotty rich kids with a little bit too much white stuff around their noses. The Stockholm club scene is actually pretty ridiculous, that is, if you even get into the clubs. Stockholm bouncers are infamous for being a bit megalomaniac, refusing people at a whim and letting others stand in line for hours while they select who gets to go in. Soap Bar and Spy Bar are examples of places like this. For some reason, they're still really popular despite all of this. Now, I might be a bit biased, but I think that those clubs qualify as tourist traps in Stockholm. Wait a second, what's that? I have a slight suspicion that that bouncer didn't like my comments. If you're a young hip person visiting Stockholm, then you definitely might end up at Stureplan at some point. Personally, I prefer alternative places compared to that. Syntax Error is a nerd club once per month in Stockholm. That one is awesome if you like games and geeky music. Parties at Nolan, Slaktuset or Debaser are also quite excellent. But on a random night out, I still think that the CD bars at Södermalm or places like Like at Hornstull are better than the trendy but overpriced nightclubs. After a night of debauchery, you need to get back to your hotel, or wherever you're staying. And what's the best way to do that? If you're thinking of taking a taxi, then you should be forewarned that taxis are expensive in Sweden and they're pretty much a tourist trap. There used to be a lot of taxi scams in Stockholm, but that seems to have gotten a lot better these days. But it's still bloody expensive either way. If it's not too late, or rather too early in the morning, then you can use the subway or other public transportation. And if that sounds too inconvenient, you can also get an Uber or a Bolt. If you happen to be sober, then riding an electric scooter is also an option, but I guess that won't be the case if it's late at night. And if all else fails, you can always walk home. Stockholm isn't that big, and it's quite possible to walk across most of the city. All of those options are, most of the time, still better than taking a taxi, in my view. And that's about it for this little video about tourist traps in Stockholm. There are of course many more tourist traps than these, but I still hope that you found this interesting, and maybe even a bit useful. Like and subscribe, but most importantly, have a great day. Oh, and make sure you also check out this video for even more Stockholm tips.